Hello students of statics, this is Dr. Dan Baker, and today's video is going to focus on stability and determinacy. Now there's going to be a, a fair bit of kind of vocabulary in today's discussion, um, and so let's go ahead and build from there. So these two different ideas of stability and determinacy, um, let's go ahead and start with determinacy. Determinacy is basically looking at do we have enough equations to solve for the unknowns? Okay, so do we have enough equations to solve for the unknowns? Of course, one of the key things in engineering is we have to have enough equations, basically one equation per unknown, to have a determinate system. So this is directly in line with that. And then the other idea here is stability. Okay, and what stability is looking at is stability looking looks at does a body have the correct supports to be fixed in space? Okay, so really those two questions. Do we have enough equations to solve for the unknowns and does the body have the correct supports to be fixed in space? Now, one nice thing for you is that these two questions have already been asked for you on every numerical problem you're asked to solve. It's really saying that, hey, at least pay attention or realize that there is this filter that all the problems you're solving numerically in statics have undergone this filter, that they're going to be both determinate and also they're going to be stable. Okay, So realize that determinacy is more of a mathematical thing. Right, just can we solve for the unknowns? Stability really looks at their physical stability. Are they going to be fixed for translation and also fixed for rotation? So let me add that little piece here. So we're looking at stability for both translation and rotation. So we have a series of rules which can help us work through these. Now I'm gonna write these rules in the order in which I actually use the rules, okay? And another thing to note here, let me just put a little star, is that um, we are only considering reactions Okay, that's reaction forces. And honestly, it's only reaction forces. Um, we're kind of leaving off reaction couples. They make things a little bit more complex. So we'll just go, we're only considering reaction forces in this analysis. So another word way of saying that is that once we have a set of reactions that are both stable and determinate, it doesn't matter what loads we put on it, that body will stay stable and determinate, okay, as long as we know what the value of the loads are. All right, so let's look a bit deep, a little bit deeper here into this idea of determinacy. So that's going to be rule number one. And once again, the question fundamentally here for determinacy is, is the number of unknowns... equal to the number of equations. And we're going to focus on two-dimensional problems. Um, you can do actually the same thing for three-dimensional, but we'll, we'll go with two. And so we've talked about the maximum number of unknowns in a two-dimensional problem is three. Hopefully either you said that out loud or in your mind, right? There's three degrees of freedom, therefore we have three independent equations, therefore we can have three unknowns. And so we can put here that if, and the unknowns here I'm gonna write as N, okay? So that's gonna be my unknowns. So if 
n is equal to 3, we can say that the system is determinate. If n is greater than 3, we have what are called redundant reactions. And we'll say these are not solvable in statics. Okay, so if you have redundant reactions, which honestly, in like a physical design sense, redundancy is good. If one reaction fails, why not have another reaction that's right there waiting to pick up the load? But because we're limited by our equations and statics, we couldn't solve for those here in this class. And then if we have the situation where n is less than 3, we'd say that the body is not stable. So this actually kind of crosses over, and I'll come back to this one after we present the rules for stability. So if you have less than three, so basically two or one um, reactions, they are solvable. You could get a value, but the body will not be stable. Okay, so let's look at rule number two, which is related to stability. Okay, so for stability, the first one I always look at is translation. So we'll look at... Um, translation stability and really the kind of reactions that prevent our body from translating are non parallel reactions okay so for translation stability we want non parallel reactions right remember these are all reaction forces so let's go ahead and do a little diagram here contrasting so if we had a body which was supported by a roller a roller and another roller creating a free body diagram of that system Of course would look like this here is our body here is our three reaction forces all those are parallel that would be bad now if we contrasted that with a similar system where we had a roller a roller and let's say a sideways roller right here now this also highlights another nuance we need to think about for this topic, and that is don't worry with rollers on this topic if you can constrain motion in only one direction but not two. That doesn't tell you it's non-stable given the context of this. So another way we can say that is assume that all rollers can constrain motion in both directions. Okay, so adding the forces, normal forces here from these two rollers, additionally having a third roller here. So using the language of this section, we would say that the system on the left is not stable for translation or in translation. Basically any lateral force, any horizontal force is gonna cause movement. And this one over here is stable for translation. And then the last rule that I check is actually related to lines of action. And this one has to do with rotational stability. So this is rule number three. And so to um, prevent, so for rotation, rotational stability, our rule is that the reaction 
force lines of action need to intersect at greater than or equal to two points to prevent rotation. So looking at some contrasting examples there, let's just stick with our very simple rectangular body. So let's say we have a pin and a horizontal applied roller, and then this one over here, the exact same two types of supports, just a little bit different orientation. Okay, so again, creating a free body diagram for each of these. And again, this isn't the full free body diagram because it doesn't have applied forces, so you can think of it as the free body diagram of the reactions. So we'd have pin forces available there, and then a normal force available here. And then assuming the same two pin forces, independent X and Y components coming from that pin, and then a third force here. So looking at these lines of action, here would be my vertical line of action. Here, actually shared between both those horizontal forces would be that line of action. And then again, here would be the vertical line of action, and then shared here, excuse me, not shared for this one. That would be the horizontal component line of action and then a third line of action over here. So what we see is we have two different points of intersection here, one and two, while we only have one point of intersection there. Okay, so I often think about in the context of Animal Farm, right, the classic dystopian book that in this case, two is good and one is bad okay so one point of intersection so this is not stable due to one point of line of action intersection and this is stable in rotation with two points of line of action intersection. Okay, so three different rules, and again, written in the order in which I would look at them. All three require a free body diagram, noting that it's a free body diagram of just the reactions. Um, any other forces added would have known values. Now revisiting um, the third point here on number one, so this one right here, if there's only two reactions, it's either gonna fall into a case where those two reactions are parallel Okay, so if they're parallel, it would be not stable for translation, or it will fall into the case where those two reactions intersect at only one point, which would fall under this case right here. So not stable due to one point of line of action intersection, right? And that's true because if you have two lines, these two lines only have two options. They can either be parallel or not parallel. If the two lines, lines of action are parallel, then it won't be fixed for translation. If they're not parallel, they're gonna intersect somewhere and it wouldn't be fixed or fundamentally it wouldn't be stable under rotation, okay? So again, N3, so if we're looking at what are the good things, just to highlight those, uh, N3 is a good thing, right? We want three unknowns, a determinant system, no, no redundancy. We want non-parallel reaction forces stable for translation, and we want two points of intersection. Those three things give us a system that is solvable in statics.
So to wrap up this video with a bit of a physical demonstration of these ideas of stability and determinacy, mainly the stability part, since that's the physical part, I've created this frame. You can assume that this frame on the outside is not moving. And we're basically gonna focus on this rectangle here on the inside and determine if it is stable um, under some given supports. Okay, so these basically are all representing two force members. There's three of them. And so what we have in this case is we have, say, two two force members coming up from the bottom. These also could be normal forces as well as one lateral here. Okay, so as we look at it, we use our different criteria. We have one, two, three unknowns. These three different supports are not parallel. That should be a good thing. And they also have two points of intersection in the lines of action. So one line of action coming across here, another one here, another one here. So intersection points at these top two corners. And so if I go to move this body, it doesn't want to move. Okay, I could push it laterally. I could pull it up and down. I could try to rotate either direction. And basically it is completely stable. So let's contrast that last one with the new situation here. Same body, same three supports. I've just changed the orientation of this one here. Now notice that these three, one, two, and three, there's still three of them, but they're now parallel. So what I can find here is if I push sideways on this body, probably not a big surprise, but it starts to move, okay? Now, as soon as we move it very far, it turns out we change the lines of action and fundamentally we end up making non-parallel lines of action in our supports. So it doesn't move a great distance, but it does move, okay? So this would be not stable in translation. So here is our third and final demonstration. Again, looking at this rectangle right here, it's stability. And so we'll notice here again, two force members, and this really could even represent a pin, right? With two of these supports right here, intersecting at one place, could represent the effect of a pin, and then a roller along a vertical wall over here, right? Picking up a normal force, maybe a cable. So this would be fixed for translation, okay? I can't move this up or down. I can't move it left or right. But you'll see as I'm even trying, like trying to move it, trying to slide it, what you see is happening is it's not fixed for rotation. Again, I can start moving this body because the line of action of these two forces and the line of action of this one single force all intersect at one single point. So it is not fixed for rotation about that one given point, okay? So it is not stable under rotation for this point. And we saw conditions earlier where even if we rotated this 90 degrees, rotated it down to here, then we would have a system that is stable for rotation. Well, I hope this overall video helps you think about both stability and also determinacy as we define it here in statics. Thanks for your attention.